Hello everyone, I'm Bruffy1322 and welcome to highlights from the first round of the Multiclass Endurance Championship Season 5. Round 1 took place on Blaine County 24 Hours, which ever since Season 2 has been the first track drivers get to test themselves on. It's the second longest circuit for each season and its layout was inspired by Circuit de la Sarthe, so it's the perfect starting point for any MCEC season. There's quite a few tricky corners to watch out for on what is quite a challenging track in general, but at least, due to its length, there isn't an awful lot of lapping between the car classes, giving drivers the chance to ease into the multi-class racing format before it gets much more hectic in future rounds on shorter circuits. As we see some highlights from previous seasons, we can see how turns 33 to 35 have been a significant flashpoint, especially last season where there was a change for the lead of the GT3 class in the very last corners of the race. Speaking of the GTs, the GT1 drivers in this race were in the Krieger, with GT2 drivers in the Tempesta and GT3 drivers in the Adder. If you want to watch live coverage of all the races, either before or after you've watched this roundup, check the description or pinned comment for unlisted videos that do just that, and for all the information you need about the championship including past seasons, full calendar, circuit links, rules and regulations and more, check the description and pinned comment for all the info that you may need. So for this season, in these videos, I'm going to be going through all the races in an order, specifically PS4, GT1, then GT2, then GT3, then the three races on Xbox, and then the three races on PC. So we're covering nine races in a single video, and like I said, if you want to see the full live coverage of all the races, check the description for links for that. Now, for PS4 GT1, Ryan W1 took the win here. There were a number of mistakes from a few people in front of him, giving young Bright Hawk the lead in his debut race in the MCEC. And then Ryan took about half an hour to catch up to him. Ma young Bright Hawk made a slight mistake, and Ryan was able to get past and take his very first MCEC win after finishing in second place in the final three races of last season to GT1 champion Murphos under his previous name, Nightmare. Young Bright, Hawk, young, young Bright Hawk, like I said, took second place on his MCEC debut, with Season 4 GT1 third place man Flaming Gun taking the final podium spot. The format of the MCEC, for those who've never seen it before, is basically three races all happening at once, GT1, GT2 and GT3. We've, you're only racing against the person in your own class and we've got nine drivers in each class. So nine drivers of GT1 all racing against each other but there are the GT2 and GT3 races all happening at the same time on the same track. And you've got to navigate the traffic and manage through uh, overtaking and letting other cars pass if you're in a slower class. Now, the races are one hour 30 minutes long. That's the endurance part of the multi-class endurance championship. And you've got to do two pit stops during a race, which have to happen after lap five. So we'll always get the first five laps of uninterrupted running at the start before we start to see some tactics and some strategy come into play with when you take your two pit stops. All teams this season, as we're seeing there, Young Bright Hawk is in the Preservex team and Ryan W1 is driving for Richards Majestic. All the teams are previous MCEC teams champions. So we don't, all, we don't just have uh, our individual driver championships, we also have a teams championship as well with a GT1, GT2 and GT3 driver for each platform being assigned to a specific team, so nine teams. Now all the drivers are for the same teams this season across all the platforms, so we're going to be having an overall teams championship as well this season, taking into account the points for all the teams across all three platforms. First time we've ever done that and it's because that we have uh, all the teams that are exactly the same because they're all previous MCEC teams champions in previous seasons, the first four seasons that we've done of this and on all the various different platforms as well. So that should be interesting. Now we've also got the standing order is set by teams as well which means that for example Los Santos Customs drivers were all on pole position for this race across every GT and every platform but every driver has an average starting position of fifth across the championship and everybody gets the chance to start at the front as well as having to start at the back as well. So it all works out even by the time we get to round eight. So we've seen the start of the GT2 race on PS4. We saw that it was a little bit of a mess. Obviously we're seeing it from my perspective now. This is the class and platform that I'm racing in, PS4 GT2. I get a relatively decent start from sixth position 
and am I, I'm able to get up into fourth place coming onto the run to the second corner. I get a decent run on, up on GT Driver, but I feel like I was a little bit rusty with that move, and then the concertina effect behind just, it, it all becomes a little bit of a mess with various little bits of contact here and there, and I find myself down in eighth place after the first couple of corners, which wasn't the best start to my GT2 championship, I guess you could say. Now, obviously with it being the first race, everybody's a little bit nervous, things are, you know, everybody's a little bit uh, just getting a feel for the race, it's an hour and a half long, so it, it you know, you, you, you kind of got to get into the groove a little bit, we obviously saw a mistake there from AG25-2014, and then we've got a battle between GT Driver and AG Axel further around the first lap, coming on to the later stages of the lap, that ends up in AG Axel uh, basically moving over a little bit too much and having a come in together and I almost managed to take away the position there but we're fighting basically over fifth and sixth positions at this point and we it, it, in front obviously as you saw there on the this uh, the, the spectator shot we've got uh, Icy Hot and TS Nobody leading the way with Sherrod and Brady in third and fourth place very close behind but Brady and Sherrod have a coming together later on around the second lap, which allows myself and GT Driver to get up into third and fourth positions. We've pretty much been following each other uh, or, or driving around with each other since since the, the first incident that we had. Now, later on in the race, there's another incident between uh, TS Nobody and Icy Hot, which we'll see the, the you know how that happens in, in the footage that allows myself and GT Driver to then take the lead. Uh, so I'm basically in second place, just shadowing what GT Driver does. Then this incident happens between Icy Hot and TS Nobody, which causes them to, they're fighting over the lead and then they, they you know, they, TS Nobody essentially knocks off Icy Hot and has to wait. And that allows myself and GT Driver to get through. So. Considering we had a bit of a nightmare start and uh, I was down in eighth place after the first couple of corners, to find myself up into sec you know back up into second place pretty much straight away was was not too bad and, and it, at this point it was going relatively well. Obviously, as you can see, we got AJ Axel and uh, TS Nobody following in close proximity after Icy Hot took an early pit stop, um, and yeah, from at this point it wasn't too bad and I felt like I. I had a decent amount of pace. I was able to close in on GT Driver. We're obviously coming up to half an hour into the race at this point on lap 11. And I, I dropped off the back of GT Driver a little bit and then started to reel him back in. And then on this lap in particular, I managed to do that e even more. And I really you know, get up onto the back of him and start pressuring him for position. And that ends up leading him to uh, make a pit stop so that put me back into the lead of the race. I, I was, you know, leading a multi-class endurance championship race. Okay, it was only via the fact that obviously GT Driver had, had made his first pit stop and I hadn't, but that was a nice feeling to be back in the lead of a multi-class endurance championship race. It, 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 I, I guess coming into this championship, I wasn't really expecting to even be in that position, but it was a nice feeling. And... At that point, you know, like I said, things were going good. I was pressuring GT Driver. I wasn't really losing time. I was driving quite well. But after this point, my plan was to use the clean air that I had in front of me to just focus on my own race and take some late pit stops and, and be able to just put in some lap times at the front and hopefully try to drive away and not get caught up with anything that's going on behind. But it quickly became apparent that I just didn't have the race pace, especially after the first few laps after GT Driver had pitted, he manages to catch back up to me and overtake me even after his pit stop. And for the first half an hour my pace was good, but then it just completely dropped off. It, it, and it wasn't even because of mistakes, I was just generally driving slow, I was driving pretty consistently, but pretty slowly. Now I did manage to hold on to second place throughout the night phase of the race until my first pit stop, but then I was caught and passed by Brady, who was having a good recovery drive after his early incident with Sherrod. And then on the same lap, the same thing happened with AG Axel. And after my second pit stop, Sherrod 
past me, dropping me down into fifth place. So from, from being in a good position in the lead, fighting for the lead of the race, I found myself in fifth place towards the end of the race. And I guess it just left me feeling a little bit sad kind of sad that I wasn't as competitive as I used to be. When GT Driver came to overtake me, I didn't even really defend because I figured what was the point, he's already a pit stop ahead. So I was down on confidence and morale even from then, and when the same thing repeated itself as the race went on, it just got worse and worse. I did put up a bit of a fight to keep uh, second place and had a good battle with uh, Brady in traffic as you'll see in the footage. but. Ultimately, I think I just didn't have the belief that I was going to keep any position for long anyway. And I haven't really done a competitive GTA event since the Multiclass Endurance Championship Season 4, which was over two years ago, and I think that really showed. I've got, I, I, I feel like I've got so many more responsibilities these days than back when the MCEC started and even just over two years ago for the previous season, that I just can't put the same dedication into it that I used to. I've got to organise the championship across the three platforms while making all the same videos for YouTube I normally make and streaming as much as I can because you know I have a mortgage to pay so I have to keep doing the things that I normally do and any free time I get I normally goes to my fiance and running a house. I just can't do hours and hours of practice laps with different spoilers and suspension setups to shave a few tenths off my lap times anymore. I'm 30 years old and this race really made that sink in to the point where my first words after the end of this race were, I'm getting too old for this, which you can see on the, the live footage if you, like I said, check out those unlisted videos down below which show the full live footage of my race and the, the live coverage of the other two races as well. But you know, none of these are excuses, by the way. Th these are just how things are. They're things that I have to accept. It's a new situation for me because I'm not used to kind of accepting being not on the pace or not competitive. But it's something that I'm going to have to deal with and get used to. I don't like it because in the end, I, I have quite a competitive and perfectionist attitude to some things. But I did enjoy my short time in the lead and being on the pace in the early part of this race and I'm going to try and enjoy other moments too during the course of this championship. But because of all of this, after this round, I'm going to focus a bit less on myself in these videos than what I've done in past seasons. I'm going to try and tell the story of the championship as a whole and the drivers within it and put less of an emphasis on my own performance with less of a need to tell the story of my race on my championship. That will ease the pressure, obviously, that, that I feel that I need to be competitive in a championship to have a good story to tell as well. And you know, if, if, I'm, if I'm in a battle for any of the top spots, then I'll include my footage just like I would for anybody else. But if I'm not, I'll barely mention myself. The, I'll, instead, in the description, like I've said, you'll see some links to some unlisted videos that not only give the full live coverage with the live commentary that we do for the Xbox One and PC races, but the full race that I had as well. So you'll be able to watch back my race in full as it happened on the stream. And I'll also include perspectives from other drivers in the PS4 race from GT1, GT2 and GT3 so that you can see the full race from multiple perspectives uninterrupted. And then that means that I don't have to focus on my race as much in these videos like I've done in past seasons. If I'm not in a fight, I'm not going to bother to do all of this kind of stuff that you're seeing and, you know, telling the story of how I dropped drop down from the lead of a race to fifth place, I don't think is, is as interesting as me giving highlights about how the race was won and, you know, the, the, the main drivers who were involved in that battle over the ultimate win of the race. So yeah, these videos are going to give quick overviews and highlights of how all nine races were won in each round and those unlisted videos will give the full stories for those who are interested in seeing more and watching the live coverage. So with that being said, now I guess we can see what happened in the GT2 race 
after Brady overtook me and GT driver took his second pit stop as those two were battling for the lead. Obviously we're going to be seeing me get overtaken by Sherrod first of all and drop down into fifth place for the class and that's kind of really where it sunk in. Um, but I did have a little bit of a rally towards the end because even though Sherrod overtakes me here as you can see, I, obviously I got overtaken by AJ Axel as well. So I was down into fifth place but all three of us were relatively close and to be fair we weren't too far away from GT driver and Brady in first and second places and in terms of the best lap times that everybody got it it, it wasn't too bad uh, and everybody was relatively close so it's going to be quite a you know it, from race to race it's going to be quite tight but yeah obviously I, I get overtaken for fifth place and at this point my, my pace wasn't good enough to be able to stick with this Sherrod goes on and starts battling with AJ Axel whereas I drop back and I'm unable to, uh, to, to to keep with that battle. So what ends up happening is that Sherrod and AJ Axel start fighting over the final podium spot in GT2 and Sherrod ends up making a little bit of a mistake coming on to uh, I believe it's the final, final lap of the race so uh, he, he makes a little mistake and that allows me to get back up into fourth place. Now I guess previously I just didn't have the belief that I was ever going to keep a position for very long but once I'd gotten back up into fourth place coming onto the final lap of the race I thought okay I've only got to I've only got to defend for one more lap as you can see here this is how it happened I, if I can defend the position even though I'm slower if I can defend effectively for one more lap I can keep this position. It's not as if I'm going to have to do it for another half an hour. And I do do that relatively well. I did actually put up some good defense to keep fourth and I managed to keep him behind me for pretty much an entire lap. And you know, if, you, if, if we're trying to look for positives from this race, I guess this would be one of them. I've still got that ability to uh, defend quite well and keep a position. Although I definitely still feel a little bit rusty in general racecraft and also pace obviously as well but unfortunately it just wasn't to be because I end up making a mistake in the final corner of the race in the way that I chose to defend and, and really the, the my decision making at this point was so bad but I ended up losing fourth place to Sherrod on the final corner of the race it, it just it so kind of this one moment summed up my entire race I felt rusty slow and old because I, I basically go for a defensive line into the final corner to block off him coming up the inside and then he goes around the outside and I basically just give him the space I could have just driven straight at that point and he would have had to back out of it but I move to the left and just invite him to take the position so it was it was I was really on a bit of a downer towards the end of the race but let's focus a little bit on how the GT2 race was won obviously as you saw there GT driver got hit in the back by a GT1 who was coming around to lap him and that lost him a good amount of time and as you can see Brady is right behind now um, and and pressuring him for the the lead of the race and uh, GT driver ends up making a, a mistake further around the lap of, on a few corners later and that gives Brady the victory or, or at least the, the, the lead of the race uh, as you can see there. So it was a bit of a shame that GT driver ended up, ended up losing the lead really because of something that wasn't his fault but then he ends up getting the win of the race back after Brady gets a penalty for not waiting for this collision. Obviously, as you can see there, he goes up the inside of VXWK, the GT3 driver, as we were lapping, and he doesn't wait for that when he should have waited for taking out a, another driver. So he got a penalty for that, dropped him down into second place, and GT driver took the win. Now, for the GT3 battle, VXWK, who was driving for the Los Santos Customs team, got off from pole position quite well and managed to keep the lead, as we can see here. And uh, the, the battle for GT3 was quite a close one. There were generally a lot of drivers in very close proximity for a lot of the time. But the, the top two in this race were able to pull away from the rest, and then there was kind of a battle behind for 
third place but it's not quite as straightforward as that it doesn't go you know that easily that the top two just get away straight away they have to work for it a little bit so as we're seeing here in the left hand side happy gster for the maze bank team uh, battling with shady fruit who's for the press of x team and they're battling over second place after vxwk is just ahead and they're having a good battle there and we've got diglett for the globe oil team behind us and ultimately it's shady fruit and diglett who end up making their way into second and third positions as you can see there from shady fruits perspective diglett is just behind uh, and we're see, even seeing it from the spectator shot there so those three alongside vxwk who managed to keep the lead from the start they're fighting over the, the lead of the race and it's pretty close now i also want to point out at this point that uh, dj matt who's driving for the 24 7 team is uh, a reserve driver for this round we'll be coming back to him very shortly because he had a really good race as well but this is where the lead changes vxwk just makes a very small mistake coming into this part of the track which is as we saw from the very start of the the video one of the the more difficult parts of the track that you've got to be careful on shady fruit then takes the lead and drives away from that point on diglett is able to get up into second place and keeps that second place as well and then we've got a three uh, a multi-way battle for third place obviously horse demo is in third as we're seeing from the spectator shot there but pit stops play a part in this as well obviously people can take their pit stops at different times and dj matt took a very early pit stop as we're seeing here he's right at the back of the gt3 field but towards the end of the race he really rallied and ultimately he took third place after a great battle with a lot of drivers we're seeing one highlight of it here with vxwk over that third place with a gt2 car mixing in as well but yeah a really good performance from obviously he was a reserve driver coming in quite late uh, and took that it took those early pit stops put in some decent lap times and was able to make his way up the order and take that final podium spot in uh, in gt3 but now we're going to see the uh, obviously the the the, over, the championship tables. We're going to see that at the end of each segment in these videos. For now, though, they are just the finishing positions of the drivers. Obviously, as we go through the seasons, this will get more interesting because we'll be able to, you know, now now at least you're seeing how the points are given out for first place all the way down to ninth, with 15 points for the winner, one point for ninth place. And then we've obviously got the team's championships as well for each platform after we've seen GT1, GT2 and GT3. For PS4, 24-7 got an early lead with 32 points with Press of X very close behind on 31. And at this point, it's really too early to tell with when it comes to team's championships because there's so many variables and so many points still on the board. Now, onto the Xbox One race. Again, GT1 to start us off. A lot of drivers were caught out at the very start. Edible Hornet gets a, a great start for the Press of X team and is able to get into the lead straight away as there is quite a lot of fighting going on. They all just about get away with it, but it wasn't the, the prettiest first corner in the world. And I guess the story of the Xbox One race is that there's a fair few mistakes and 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 nerviness in gt1 for example r2x dj in the first half an hour of the race makes quite a few mistakes obviously also gets caught up with a mistake uh, that we've seen there as well from despecky legend despecky legend who started in pole position for the los santos customs team he was able to keep that third place that he's just gotten there that we've seen but unfortunately disconnected later into the race so so didn't get to keep that unfortunately but at this point edible hornet has a very very good lead as we see r2x dj having a bit of a nightmare in the first couple of corners of the first lap now king blaze our gt1 champion from last season in season four on xbox manages to take second place away from uh from despecky legend as you've just seen there he's driving for the 24 7 team uh this this season and then it takes him quite a while to be fair, Edible Hornet does a great job out in front but he ends up being able to catch and they're fighting over the lead. Just to point out as well that the team names, these are all real 
uh, companies in the, the GTA law. So 24-7 is kind of like a 7-Eleven uh, chain. We've got obviously Maze Bank, Globe Oil, Ron. They're all companies in GTA, just in case. I'm sure that was obvious, but I just wanted to make sure that everybody knew. Um, but yeah, we got Blaze goes for a pit stop here. And obviously the idea with that is to try and undercut uh, undercut Edible Hornet so that when Edible Hornet pits, Blaze will be able to, you know, pass him in the pit lane. But Edible Hornet ends up getting caught up with a few slower GT traffic. Blaze is able to actually catch him up on track, just like GT Driver did to me in the, the GT2 PS4 race. And ultimately, Blaze never looks back from that point on and takes the victory. So starting well, uh, all that design, who's racing for the U-Tool team, uh, had a good... Uh, a good recovery drive from some early uh, early issues to finish in second place and that meant that there was a really really great battle over third place r 2 xdj who'd made a lot of mistakes and had a, quite a few issues in the first half an hour of the race came on really strong towards the end of the race and managed to catch up to edible hornet and they gave us a great show over the final podium spot in gt1 if you go and watch the, the live coverage, like I said, the links for those are in the description. Uh, myself and Hammer, who were commentating over the races, were watching this live, and, and it was great. The, the, the positions were changing every lap. Obviously, this is me in the race, so I was getting to see this from a, an outside spectator perspective as well. And they, they, get, they served up a real treat. These are the final few laps of the race as well. You know, there's only two laps to go, as you see there. And R2XDJ had just made the overtake for third place, but Edible Hornet repays the favour right around the outside of the hairpin on the next lap. And it was just incredible action over the in, in the final few corners of the lap. And, you know, really well done to these drivers for giving us some action in this race. And, and this is going to be what's, what's going to happen during the entire season this is this is what the mcec is all about these close battles we're going to see them in every single gt through up and down the field it's just it's just exciting when moments like this happen so ultimately in the end after giving us a great battle for a few laps edible hornet unfortunately makes a slight mistake and gives up that third place to r2x dj really both of them deserved a third place in this race edible hornet had a great race from the lead uh, and was able to hold it very well r2x dj came back very well after some early issues and the, the the race that they both gave us i mean look at this side by side into the first corner going onto the final lap of the race they, they gave us some excellent racing but unfortunately as we come on further in this lap Edible Horn just goes a little bit wide in one of the corners and it, it loses too much time basically and R2X DJ takes that third place in the final podium spot. But yeah, well done to both these drivers and I look forward to hopefully seeing more of this from these drivers and anybody else. Obviously the Specky Legend who uh, disconnected from the GT1 race, hopefully he gets mixed in with this as well without a disconnection and the same goes for everybody else across the platforms and across the uh, the GTs this is this is what it's all about stuff like this this is where the mistake happens unfortunately the Krieger just didn't have enough grip to keep it around the outside there and r 2 xdj manages to keep that third place so moving on to the GT2 race we had Charlie Addo who started in pole position for the Los Santos Customs team absolutely dominate this race he got to the first corner first from pole position and drove away from everybody else. He had the best lap time, and it was basically the perfect first race in the MCC. As you can see him there, he just gets away in front of everybody else. Who There's a few coming together towards the, the, the further the back end of the GT2 field, but in general, it was relatively clean. But the the battle behind was, was, was pretty good in GT2 on Xbox One. Obviously, we see a people get turned around g ross is racing for the ron racing team basically my counterpart on xbox i'm racing for gt2 for ron on ps4 he gets turned around there so he has a bit of a bad start kind of just like i did 
And then he does a very similar to thing to what DJ Matt did in the PS4 GT3 race and makes some early pit stops. And he has a great comeback through the field to end up finishing in second place after a few mistakes from people ahead and also just putting in some decent lap times and getting some decent overtakes. We see here that uh, you've, this is this is some of the art of uh, multi-class racing. If you're in GT2, you're overtaking GT3s, but you're also getting overtaken by GT1s, and you can use the the management of that traffic to your advantage. If if you you know you, you can if you can manage the traffic well you can try and gain positions and time from that or at least lose less time than other people might lose in the same situation so yeah it was a it was a really good comeback drive from giros obviously uh like i said he made those early pit stops which put him quite far down the order initially and then when other people made their pit stops he either ended up overtaking them through the pit stops as we're seeing here uh, against pp performance or he, he was in close proximity to then be able to overtake on track. And that was ultimately the move that gave him second place in GT2. But it must be said that behind Charlie, as we're seeing there, Giro, some PP performance going into the hairpin, it was pretty close. So we've got second, third, fourth and fifth places in GT2. And I think even sixth place, they were all pretty close together. So I think GT2 on Xbox this season it is is gonna be a, a an interesting one to keep an eye on and i'm recording this after round two has already happened and there's that that, that was a definitely a true statement round two xbox one gt2 what a race that was but you'll have to wait until the video to see that now gt3 which is the final race that we'll cover for this video for reasons that i'll explain major copyright had a very good race and he basically did a perfectly composed MCEC race. As we see a few people get turned around at the start there. It was a little bit messy towards the back end of GT3. Recited in the bottom left there in his very first MCEC race. He takes advantage of that and gets is just behind the leaders. He has a very good race as well for his very first MCEC race. And basically the three people who we're seeing on screen now we're all battling for the lead of this race at various stages throughout it. The, the, the main difference was that RJ Slow was basically a pit stop behind Major Copyright and Recited every time that they were battling. So really RJ Slow was not really in the fight because he was a pit stop behind. He still had an extra pit stop to make, but they still served up a treat in terms of actual on-track racing between the three of them. As you can see, they're all so close together. This is for the lead now in GT3. After they'd worked their way up and people in front had made some mistakes, th this is for the lead and, and this is how close it is. Ultimately, at this point, RJ Slow makes a little bit of a mistake and that, uh, that, that gifts the lead to Recited because he ends up taking out Major Copyright. He then obviously has to wait for that takeout and give the position back. But then Recited is able to take advantage of that and get up into the lead. And then later on, Major Copyright takes advantage of a mistake from Recited and allows him to get back into the lead himself. And I think that the ultimately the winner of this race was the person who made the least mistakes and, and was able to drive relatively quickly. And that was, in the end, Major Copyright. He just, he just drove a very... A, a very just a, a good multi-class endurance race not many mistakes made key overtakes when it was needed as we're seeing here against recited and it, because rj slow was obviously still had a pit stop to make at this point it, it, all, all copyright had to do was was keep it clean and that's what he did recited did fade a little bit later on into the race obviously that will come with experience we, we, you know it's an hour and a half long race if it's your very first multi-class insurance championship race, you're going to have issues. I mean, I had issues after the first half an hour and how many of these have I done now? Uh, so so in the end, RJ Slaw had the pace to take second place away from Recited, but these three served up a great race and hopefully we see more of that throughout the championship as well. But Major Copyright was able to take his uh, first MCEC win, I believe, 
after having done it for quite a few seasons now so really good job to him and a great start to the season RJ Slow finished in second place with uh, Recited taking the final podium spot and this is basically the final lap of the race that we're seeing here so we're seeing all that design in second place for GT1 we'll see King Blaze cross the line for first place in GT1 and for for the very first race of the championship Xbox One is always the first race that we do every weekend it, it was a really good one a really interesting one to spectate I had a lot of fun and I definitely recommend checking out the live streams for on, on Saturdays for the coverage of the Xbox One and the PC races or Sunday for the coverage of my race when I'm racing myself. We, we have a lot of fun, um, but like I said, you can see the full live coverage from all the races from the links in the description as well. So the championship tables are basically the finishing positions like we saw. When it comes to the team's championship, it's very close on Xbox after round one incredibly close there's basically one point separating each of the top few teams ron are in the lead for the team's championship on xbox one but it's so close to call you know 27 26 25 24 23 21 points for the top six teams it's going to be an interesting season when it comes to the team's championship but pc with gt rockstar first of all this was the pc race and the reason it was like this is because Rockstar servers were a nightmare. This weekend we had trouble getting the PS4 and Xbox One races started, but we were just able to do it. But it seems like when Rockstar servers go down, the PC version of the game is much worse affected because of Social Club and all that kind of stuff. So the PC race never got done. We didn't get a chance to do it. So there's nobody, nobody on the board, no scores, no nothing. That's it. PC's got nothing at the minute. So that's something that the plan is to uh, basically the, the the footage that you just saw was about you know I think there was maybe thirteen or fourteen people who actually made it into the lobby after trying for about five hours across Saturday and Sunday to get this race started it just wouldn't happen and that was the first corner of what happened you know that that was that was the the resulting aspect of it with a, a lot of drunk PC drivers who were kind of sick of the life at that moment and understandably so so the idea is to try and get that race done at some point during the championship maybe as a double header and if we can't we'll do it at the very end of the championship after round eight has been completed so the overall team's championship at this point only includes the points for xbox one and pc uh, ps4 for round one so that's it for round one of the Multiclass Endurance Championship Season 5. You can either keep up with the championship live each weekend on Twitch or just wait until the next episode of these highlight videos. And as I said, you can also watch the full uninterrupted live stream coverage from each of the races with spectating and commentary for Xbox One and PC, plus my race alongside the footage from one driver from each GT for PS4 with the unlisted videos as well. All of the links for those, as well as any other info that you may need about the championship, can be found down below in the video description and pinned comment. Thank you all so much for watching, I really do appreciate it, and I'll see you next time.